Jesse Greer, thank you so much for, for being on the Harder Not Smarter podcast. You have a phenomenal background. You're exactly the type of person that, that we want to have on the show. I mean, we, we talk about it frequently. Uh, the Harder Not Smarter show is all about entrepreneurship, mental health, mindset, and career transition. And today, I feel like we get to talk about all four of those with you. You were a, a flight surgeon. You were a special forces group surgeon. Um, uh, you run your own business now. You just got it. Well, I, Man, 2018. And he, had, hey, was just so, he, had, he had his long tab as well. I mean, he went through the whole SFQ course. Yeah, so and, there's that. Yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, he's just a glutton for punishment. He's like, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a flight surgeon. I'm going to be SF. Um, I'm going to run my own business. Like, tell us a little bit about yourself so instead of just me rambling yeah, would, down your, your list of accomplishments. I was, having a tr- I was having trouble getting dates at the time, man. So I was just trying to get something interesting to talk about, you know, so... <laughs> The doctor thing didn't work out as well. So, you know, I was in North Carolina and no, I'm just kidding. It was, but you know, they, uh, <laughs> like, I don't want to date a doctor. I want, I want to date a, uh, an SF guy. Like, fuck, now I need to do that too. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I kind of had both of them, um, you know, it was, it was competing interests when I was getting out of uh, undergraduate, you know, right around kind of 9-11, the Iraq invasion. And I was, you know, I, I got into the military's medical school. So I thought it was kind of a good. A uh, good halfway point, you know, you could do them both. But I mean, you know, I went to, um, there's like a three week officer basic course. You know, we, um, we had to get up at 630 to go to go PT, you know, all the other like young wannabe doctors, we're, we're hitting a good 15, 20 push ups in the morning. And it's the gentleman's now, OCS. It, oh, yeah. We, we, we were gone PT and the maids would come in and make up our room. So, so, there was... <laughs> <laughs> right. it, it was, you guys didn't even turn down service in your uh, in your boot camp. Oh no! The, the put a little no. mint on the on the pillow. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm wasn't, pretty sure they exactly were like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were mint. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, and then they you know the NCOs were really nice. Yeah, they would walk us over to go get our haircuts. And, you know, like show us like oh this is where you get your you know your 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 t- your little things ironed on your uniform and. Um, yeah, it was very, very cordial, very, very nice. I was like, wait a minute. I don't think this is the, the military and, um, you know, fair enough. It was, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to tax the, the, the docs too much. You know, they're, um, they're foregoing, uh, you know, going to, they're, they're You're sensitive the people. Army. What's that? You're sensitive people. They're sensitive people. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the, the PT test was more of just, you know, it was kind of a group activity is words that weren't really graded on it so much. Uh, Trash falls and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was, yeah. So you, you, you eventually kind of like, well, that wasn't, that wasn't a good halfway point at all. Uh, and then, you know, you, you're just wearing a uniform while you're, you know, doing your medical training and stuff, which is good. You probably shouldn't be doing much more than that. Cause there's a lot of shit you gotta, you gotta pay attention to. And, uh, and that's great. Yeah. Uh, and then just, you know, then you're like, oh man, I didn't really think through this. I, I think, I wanted to be a doctor, like, you know, you, you know, like kids want to be fire trucks or some shit, you know, it was like, Oh, it seems cool. Like, let's just, uh, let's go do that. Um, and then you're like, wow, this is uh, a lot of, a lot of sick old people in the hospital. And I wasn't, uh, wasn't quite sure I wanted to do this or n- do this for the rest of my life. But uh, this is, this isn't the TV show mash. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> or like, where the fuck is mash? I want to go do that. That's, that's yeah. even cool. <laughs> uh, and, you know, just try to, uh, and, and, you know, so it, it actually comes down to, <clears throat> I was working in the ICU as a resident and there was a, a, a doc who had come back. He'd, he'd been out with the army. He was a, he was a battalion surgeon for fifth group. And man, he just had this, he was kind of dead behind the eyes in, in a way that he had just like come from the best job ever. And now he hated his life. And, oh, and that, was, that kind of dead behind the eyes. Okay. Yeah. And he was like, he was, this sucks. Like I just came from the best job ever. And I was like, what's the best job ever? <laughs> you know, was like, I was a battalion surgeon at fifth group. And, you know, we'd go out with the guys. I'd go shooting all the time, you know, or jumping out of helicopters. And, and I was like, I want to be dead behind the eyes like you. Like, I want that. Job. I, want, I want to see the promised land. Whatever the fuck you saw, I want to see it, you know. And uh, just kind of got me super interested into it, man. And, uh, you know, I, I figured out where the... Uh, the use of sock surgeon was that the doctor that's in charge of picking all the jobs for the for the doctors and those things and found out where he was having drinks one night and just harassed him until he until he gave me a, a shot to to uh, to take a job underneath the special operations command. So, so what, uh, what does that process look like? 
Um, well, I mean, that was that was more of an entry level position. So it was like, OK, um, you know, pass a couple of background checks and then um, and then, you know, kind of put you with the B team. It was it was a it was a, it was a group called the 528th. So they're they're like, you know, soft adjacent, you know, um, definitely any chick at the bar, you're telling them you're working with special operations and things like that. But <laughs> You wouldn't say that around somebody else who was working with them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but you know, we got we would get we, we we had some pretty cool gigs though. We had a it was a most of it was a signal unit, but they had this small medical attachment, and it was one doc like a trauma nurse. We'd have a CRNA and four or five combat medics, and all of our medics were folks who had been going through the Delta the the Special Forces pipeline, and then somehow kind of ended up outside of it. Uh, so they were great medics that so we would get attached with ODAs, the, the, the 12 man special forces teams and, and, uh, uh, you know, central Africa or Afghanistan. And, and, and it was pretty cool. We'd get to go, you know, attached to those guys, go out in the middle of nowhere and provide some non-surgical, but still life sustaining support pretty far forward. So cool training, cool stuff. And I was like, hell yeah, this is, this is a lot more my speed. Uh, and then, you know, just got a, uh, an opportunity. The, the use of sock surgeon was like, Hey. I was just talking with the uh, whoever the the commanding general was at the time, and I got this this cool program opened up where we can send a doctor through once a year uh, through the Q course. Would you want to do it? You know, I think it caught me while I was drinking coffee out of a straw, like a like my dad told me not to when I was young, and uh, um, I didn't want to seem like a like a wuss, you know. Um, and, and I was just like, yeah. And then he was like, okay, great. You know, you're, you're number fourth on the list, you know? So I was like, well, there's no way they'll, they'll get to me. Uh, but you know, doctors apparently aren't very good at land nav or, uh, you know, they you know, tend to tend to break their legs through the, through, the, uh, through selection and, uh, sure as shit, four months later, got a call, you know, good thing I was running in between and got a chance to do selection and, um, managed to pass that by the skin of my teeth. And then, yeah, it took a year and a half off and I went through the Q course. How was, was that like going through you? as a, yeah, let's, we'll talk, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk land nav. Let's talk land nav first. And then we'll talk about okay. going through the course as a, I was as a wandering doc. through the, uh, the hill is North Carolina, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Wandering um, through the swamps of North Carolina. I, I had, a, a, we were in Virginia for, for the Marines. We do our land nav up in, uh, up in Quantico. So similar stuff. I mean, it's, it's marshy East coast. Your guys is just a whole lot more swampy. Um, and it just, it, it Land nav by yourself is an interesting, very meditative experience until you start like all that self self doubt, hate talk. When there's no one else around, you're like, "What the oh, fuck is this little box?" That that is real, um, Greg. I'm sure you remember the the, the Star Course pretty well. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I had I had not really ever done land nav. I, again, I, I think I did, I'd done it at like the that officer basic course. But again, you know, they give you crayons and, 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 and probably, you know, like more detailed maps. And there's a bunch of people. Find your way across this playground. <laughs> yeah. Somebody was with water halfway on the other end of it to make sure <laughs> you didn't get dehydrated. Uh, but they, they did this really good educational course beforehand. Um, and so, man, I was or just, you know, like, hey, this is how you do land nav. You know, special. They were priding themselves on, you know, you come in with, with any MOS and they'll show you how to do it. So I was taking notes. Uh, I didn't really help much on the first day. You know, I think I was out there for 14 hours and found two points, you know, all the 14 uh... hours. <laughs> <laughs> so long. Dude, it's miserable. You start at like 11 o'clock at night and you go until like one o'clock in the afternoon or you have that long to go. And, and most people take the entire time to to find their points or uh, points not find it? any at all. It was five. Four points a night. Is it, four four is it five? Yeah. I thought I thought so it was when I when I when I did it there I think there was five points and it's a two-day event so you if you find all five that first day then you go home on the fucking winter bus um and if you don't <laughs> you you have to find a total of seven with the two days and and I found two on that first day and I barely found two I thought I got I was I was like running into the second point like as the you know as as the time ended uh and man I had to sleep around you're right that gets in your head and i was sleeping around a bunch of guys uh and they were just like they started talking about like oh you know what man like they were coming over and they're like my, my sister was telling me about like nurse practitioner school so if this doesn't work out you know maybe i'd go do something like that or i'm like i'm like 
get your loser ass over there. Like I can't, yeah. my head can't deal with this. I'm trying to sort out my own shit. I don't need to hear you feeling sorry for yourself. You Two know? course nurse practitioner. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? no, go. Like I'm trying, I, I can only deal with my own head space right now. Yeah. And then, and then just got lucky enough on the, on the next day, uh, a luckier draw or something, kept out of the swamp, you know, didn't get stuck in the, in the draws for, for hours. Mm hmm. Past it, yeah. That's my that was my favorite part about when Nav is like in the middle. So I was I was a 18 X ray, so that means I had I got through I had to go through the special operations preparation and conditioning course, which is like it's basically when you're when you're going off of the streets, it's, it gives you like three more weeks to like work out, and you're also doing land nav at Camp McCall, which is where yep. the star course is at. You're not doing land nav on the star course, but you're doing it like you know in the same areas, so you have a leg up for sure. So I I. By the time I was there, I was like ready to go with land nav. My favorite part about land nav, though, was like to be walking through a draw in the middle of the night and just like hear somebody absolutely just losing their shit, like just like like <laughs> wanting, like screaming, like "Oh fuck!" It was it was the most entertaining thing, and just to like hear that was like the most motivating thing at the time. Just like, oh hell yeah, like this person's struggling so hard. And what is and it I've about our this. community that we just love the 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 misery of our friends and colleagues? We're like, as long as you're oh. not like de dying in a ditch someplace, we'll laugh at you. You eat shit and fall into a swamp face first. If yeah. if if so you good. I don't know whatever else, it's the funniest thing in the world. Like, we just appreciate everyone else's misery while we're miserable yeah but it's just a good reminder that there's just somebody out there a little worse off than you so like, <laughs> yeah oh yeah i, I, I had a i had a <laughs> new hatred for beavers like when, when i when i i'm from california we don't have beavers out here um and so i was, when i was going through land nav, land nav is a huge part of uh the basic tool for for marines like that we, we do a part of it in, in seal training but by the time i got to seal training that stuff was easy uh because the marines we do like a full it's like two months of land nav interspersed throughout the training and it gets harder and harder and harder as it gets longer um and i've never been around beavers and so you're looking at the map like oh sweet it's just a little creek right here i'm gonna go right across that and points right on the other side and you get there and there's a fucking dam and like a 300 yard wide lake now because the beavers decided to dam it up and you're just like how the hell am i gonna get around this thing i have no idea <laughs> where this goes is just like glistening water in all directions so that's my hatred of beavers now and the <laughs> east coast there there was a good um on that first night of land nav when i was just when i was just eating shit um man i got stuck in these in these trees it must have been for a good hour and a half you know like you got your your ruck on and, and you and i was i was locked in there i was like there's no way out you know you can't turn on your damn head headlamp and there's you know um there's cadre out there spot and i was like there's no way there's anyone around here you know so like uh but of course that's exactly where all the the rookies get stuck and so there was sure as shit somebody was was standing by there so i was like fuck this i turned my headlamp on and i start looking around trying to get out of here and i hear hey hey candidate like whose light is that so i tur turned it off and then it just you know and then i just go still right i was like oh yeah. you probably probably can't see me and i hear the footsteps and the footsteps getting closer and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? It, I mean, 20 feet away. I didn't even know there was another dude there. And he finds this guy who was also had his headlamp on, you know, like just, just screaming at him and, and, and grabs him, pulls him off the course, you know, like disqualifies him. And I was just like, holy shit. You know, like just by the skin, of my teeth, <laughs> skin of my teeth, some other random dude was over there with his kid, with his headlamp on. It could have easily been me. Those are the best stories. I, if if you get if you get uh, caught up with it by a cadre, you just like you run, you run, and you don't you don't even stop because they're not they're not going to come to get you. Especially and if you're in a, if you're in a in a um, if you're in a draw, like they're not coming in to get there. You just turn off your light and you hunker down and sit in there because they're they're going to yep. leave. They're not going to sit out yep. there to, to catch you. Yeah, those are the best stories. <laughs> It's like seal instructors. They'll they'll go out of their way to keep their boots dry. Yeah. Uh, so as long so as long as you run out to the water, they're like whatever. They're wet now. <laughs> so it's, that's that's why seals always know where the water is because that's where we're just gonna escape to. Yeah. I can either take a beating from this instructor, or I can sprint out to the ocean and just haze myself for a second. And they'll go away. Yeah, I think they appreciate that.
They're like, yeah, that was that's, like, that's look at this idiot. He just ran into the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> so to walk us through the, the, the rest of your Q course, um, obviously this was no longer the gentleman's uh, OCS course that you went through as a doctor. I'm, I'm sure there's yep. some level of, we don't want to completely break this guy because we want him in, in our uh, community, but we're also not going to hand this over. Well, exactly right. Yeah. It's still, it was still up for that, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was interesting going through as a doctor because you would find folks, you know, especially if there were like ex medics, right. Then they would tend to have maybe a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more respected. It was probably a little bit easier. They were just kind of interested in talking to you. And then the other, you know, and then, but then there was like 10 or 15% were like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, he's not going to, you know, like and they, they give you a harder time than you probably deserved. Um, and that was, of course, mainly with the officers. Like I remember the, the officer in charge of the, um, you know, the, the MOS training, which was the, I, I did it the, uh, the officer route and man, this guy, he was not a, not a, not a big fan of me, not for like any really particular reason. Um, and he was, he was one of those guys who was just super honest about it. He'd just be like, look, I really don't like you like as a person <laughs> or like, you know, I don't like the fact that you're in here. I'd love to, I'd love to kick you out. Uh, but that's going to cost me a lot of shit. And I was just like, man, you're really being honest. about. It. I, 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 I appreciate, appreciate your honesty. Yeah, I appreciate your honesty. I, mean, kind I, of a I hate you at a visceral level and I will do everything I can to make you leave as long as it's not making my life any worse. Yeah. But it would make my life worse if I tried to do something about it. So I just want you to know. And I'm like, yeah, all right, fair enough. Uh, Noted. But, you know, um, no, it was, it was great, you know, but it was, I mean, especially when I was doing the MOS training, I mean, those, those, those officers, you know, coming out of West Point, there was like a couple guys from Ivy League schools and they've been doing that stuff for a few years. And man, they were sharp as shit. Um, so trying to, to, you know, keep up with those guys and, 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 and just kind of learn from them. Uh, it was it was a great experience, and you know you kind of kind of mimic that, and, and and then you and then you start to understand the whole how just you know over the top that planning process is, and and, and the way that they're thinking about things, and you're just like, oh man, this is actually um, this is this is a great way to plan for anything, you know, you, like just all contingencies, and um, it was uh, it was great, uh, you know, SUT or the small unit tactics, you know, the first time kind of out there. Uh, moving around with groups and you know setting ambushes and learning all that stuff. I mean, it was oh, it was it was it was just so cool. I, I mean, I, I loved doing that every day. Just you know, learning learning new stuff, even if it was three or five degrees out there and you're sleeping on the ground trying to do all this stuff. And um, uh, just a just a, a great experience and 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 get to push yourself and uh, realize you have a lot more you know left in the tank than you ever thought that you had. And um, yeah, just a whole kind of new newfound respect for all that stuff. Um, but again, I, br I broke my leg halfway through, uh, on a jump, like a, you know, one of the jumps on there, but, you know, managed to, to, uh, do it right before our language training course. So I healed up and just, just kind of kept oh, pushing perfect. through. Yeah, I know. I know. It was, it was just, just, uh, if there was an opportunity time that. to break a leg, I guess that's it. <laughs> that would be it. That would 100% be it. Yeah. yeah. It was a night jump. And, and I, I and I do I broke it, you know, I felt the snap. It was just my fibula. So it was the, the you know, that tiny little bone on the outside of your leg. So it wasn't like my tibia, right? So I, I stood up. The first thing I tried to do was walk it off. And then I could just feel that little bone kind of moving around in there, you know, brushing up against itself. And I was like, oh, son of a bitch. So I, you know, packed up the chute and kind of started limping in. And um, you know how the cadre te or treat the, uh, the the students coming through there. And, and so I, the medics were out there and I was like, hey, hey, look, guys, I, um, I, I think I broke the, my leg here. You know, we're probably, probably going to have to go to the hospital. And they were just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Who the, what the <laughs> fuck? I'll take a look at this. And I was like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, guys, just before you say something stupid, I'm a doctor. Like, I know I get, I get the cadre thing, but like, <laughs> and then he pulled it up and sure shit, there was a huge defect in there, you know? And they're like, oh yeah, it's broken. But, I was like, like an <laughs> actual doctor, yeah. not, not some PhD person that, that studied yeah. Uh, yeah. health sciences. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I hate static line jumping. Kevin, did oh. you guys have, did you guys have to static line? Yeah. So fortunately, because seals are such dicks, um, we got kicked out of the army jump school program a while. Uh, I don't think we actually got kicked out, but it was a, it was a mutually agreed upon separation that we're no longer going to send seals to the army airborne school. Cause that's what they used to do. You finish, uh, finish your seal qualification stuff. You head out to Benning and you do your static line and then you 
I don't remember where they used to do the free fall, I think Arizona or something. Uh, but you know, you, you're taking a bunch of cocky seals that just finished arguably one of the hardest training uh, curriculums in, in the world. And then you're going to send them to Fort Benning with like basic level airborne infantry guys that are just starting off. You know, these guys have been in the military for all of a couple months. Um, and so that, you know, they're doing 10 pushups at a time after we've been doing literally hundreds of pushups at a time. And so guys were, were going out there just being assholes. And so a, it was expensive to send guys all the way out to, to Benning from San Diego housing. I'm doing all that stuff. So we set up our own jump school here in San Diego that we all go through because, you know, they, they said it's, it's uh, army army airborne school is a three week or is, is a three day course crammed into three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Super drawn out to do the five jumps need to qual. So we knock that whole thing out in, in the span of a week. And then we do our free fall training right after. Nice. Okay, yeah. So you guys are all doing free fall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we do, we do our five mandatory jumps to get our, our static line qual. Uh, and then we very, very rarely do it again outside of doing like a, a water jump with, with, um, our boats and stuff like that, just because, you know, it's usually frowned upon to uh, be doing free fall with, uh, with large objects in the sky. So, uh, we'll occasionally do free fall, but most of the time it's, uh, when we, when we're jumping with boats into the water, it's, uh, it's going to be static. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Instead of every, that, I hate every quarter. Let me just static reiterate. Sucks. Static line water is the worst thing ever. It's cool if you jump into the water because you don't have to worry about that that shitty landing. The downside is the post jump maintenance of water jumps is a huge pain in the ass because they don't they don't just deep six the the shoots. Those things are expensive, and so unless it's an actual operational jump, we're going to collect all the shoots, carry them back, bring them to the uh, the air loft, do the the three different water bucket rinses, hang them up. And you're doing that with you know, 30, 40 shoots. It takes all day to do one jump. So that part really sucks, but it is that cool. Was the nice thing. In seventh group, we, they, they started, we, we started doing water jumps out there, you know, cause we were right mm -hmm. on, the, on the beach out there in, in, in Destin, Florida. That was nice. The water is so blue, but you could also get a good view of all the sharks that were kind of down there in the shallows <laughs> beforehand, you know, <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I've ever kind of admitted this, but you're just, you know, you get out there, you're in the, I, I would, I would tend to kind of put the chute underneath me, just, you know, just waiting, you know, for the, for the boats to kind of come around, you know, just, there's some monsters fight, out fight there. This stuff know. instead. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we actually had a, a shark attack here in Del Mar, uh, yesterday, two days ago, some dude got a, a group of swimmers that go out and they, you know, they swim every morning. Yeah. Dude got bit across the chest, had a had a sucking chest wound from it lived apparently, but yeah, we, we have the, the juvenile great whites out here, uh, which they don't, they're not doing it cause they're necessarily going to eat you, but they're trying to figure out what you are. They don't yeah. really like humans. Uh, so they, they do those, uh, those tasty tasting bites where they just bite the shit out of you, let you bleed out. as they're like, nah, that was gross and swim away. Yeah. <laughs> the little Costco samplers out there swimming. Yeah. Like, nah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we, we get them occasionally, not very often. We haven't had one for, for several years, but you're just like, man, that, that's a shit. Yeah, it was on Sunday. That's right. Cause we're like, man, that's a shitty way to start your, your Sunday. This is getting bit across the chest by a six foot great white. I would have been thinking, I would have been waiting the entire swim for that to happen. You know, so it's just like the whole stress of it. And then, and then it just it happens there at the end. Yeah. Well, welcome to buds. Every, every ocean swim, especially when you're Has doing anybody... surf tortures. Has anybody ever been bitten by a shark at buds? I don't think so. Uh, we were getting surf tortured one time and a half eaten seal upper torso was just like floating amongst us. It was disconcerting and gross. We also have the Tijuana estuary. Um, when, when the tides go the wrong way, Sounds like a flight word for the toilet runoff or yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hundred <laughs> percent Mexican <laughs> toilet water. It's Mexican to toilet water that sometimes flows North. Uh, you know, Buds is seven miles from eight. No, it's probably more like 10 miles from the border. Um, and so, yeah, you, you get that runoff and it, it just reeks. God damn it. We're just sitting out here and you know, your legs are all chafed up. You have open abrasion wounds all over you. This is not safe. <laughs> yeah, probably a lot more skin infections than shark bites. Yeah, yeah, significantly more. It's great. Yeah. Buds is great for the soul. 
<laughs> it is. I mean, it has to be right. There, there, there's those those amount of times that you 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 push yourself so hard, you know, harder than you ever have. You know, it. it I mean, it kind of makes you realize that you're kind of being a a, a pussy all the years before. You know. Yeah. You're complaining with you. You know. You're like, oh no, I, I had a lot more in the tank. Kind Threw of interest for old me now. I need to be reminded of that now. Like it's all it's all relative. Like you get in yeah. these like, especially now that you're out. Like it's like oh like this is really nice. Like, I think I'll start having cream with my coffee and I'll start, you know, pinkies out when I'm drinking it as well. And, and I'm like, hey, wow, don't, not cream of the coffee. I love milk in my coffee. Anybody that says otherwise, they're just, I drink my coffee. I drink my coffee black, like my soul, it's, Kevin. It's, um, fine. it's like, it's like that line about farts. Like if you don't find farts funny, you're just going through life with the same number of farts, but a whole lot less humor. <laughs> I, okay. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. <laughs> it's the same with, with coffee. Like, if you drink black coffee, you're having the same cups of coffee. You're just not enjoying them as much as somebody that puts a little bit of cream in there. <laughs> or milk. Touche. What, what about the no, no almond milk, though? That's that's nut juice. Are, yeah, are we sure? Are we <laughs> sure not that's milk. not create a bunch <laughs> of problems? What, milk or nut juice? Just, yeah, nut juice. I don't know. I mean, nut juice <laughs> is a whole separate issue. Like that's, that's driving, I think, half of the water in California is going to the almond farms. It's something really? stupid. Now, not actually half that number is not quantified. Anybody who's actually fact checking me, it's a it's a huge percentage though of uh, California's water is going to almonds because almonds apparently go for so so much at the store that it's just one of those crops that it pays to, to grow. Them. But the almond, a it's a gallon of water per almond. Are you what? serious? Yes. Yeah. But the the amount of almond almond milk consumption and like. The crazy inflection of just like macro events. I think they're they, they might be pretty correlated. I don't, I, I, I don't know if anybody's ever looked into that, but macro you know. like what? Like yeah, JK getting know, assassinated. Just, uh, I mean, you know, uh, uh, gender dysphoria or, or the, oh that type or, of stuff. Macro governments, uh, you know, or, or World War Three approaching. I don't know anything. Like uh, there's, there's some, you know, teen girl suicide rate something. They're all they're all inflecting right around uh, 2012 when uh, almond milk started getting big. <laughs> I don't know. It's, just, yeah, I, you know, somebody look into it. I, just, yeah, I think there's there's somebody that's someone on the show this podcast right now. Yeah, just go someone someone go do a, conduct a study for us and get back to us yeah. on that one. <laughs> I'm not going to be to get you too controversial with the the gender dysphoria. <laughs> I just popped in the head. No, no that's, that's, that's fine. fine. We're yeah. blaming almond milk, which is just an evil evil thing. Yeah, not milk. Stop calling it milk. Where, where do we stand on the on the health of or the healthiness of almond milk? Yeah, I'm going to talk out of two sides of the mouth here because sometimes I'll drink some almond milk with, uh, you know, if uh, if I'm trying to reduce sugar and, and things, you know, like if I like for a protein shake, I mean, you get a good source of protein in there and you're not eating so many any carbs in the morning. But, you know, also maybe I've been doing maybe I've been uh, hanging out in the ladies clothes section too long. So, you know, it's uh, <laughs> how about the really claim that, you together. know, al almonds and, or is that just soy milk? I think that was soy milk. Never mind. That was a different one where soy milk was big for a while. Um, and then everyone's like, well, there's estrogen in it. So you shouldn't, for guys, you shouldn't have it because it's estrogen. I'm like, how much estrogen is in soy milk? Is this actually a concern? <laughs> yeah. Let alone like, uh, yeah, all the, all the dudes um, that are they're taking, uh, you know, extra anabolic uh, supplements, right? Driving their estrogen up to like, you know, seven or a hundred, you know. Uh, but they're, uh, but be worried about the, the soy milk. Yeah. The soy milk. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of milk, here, this might be too much information for some, but so we just had, uh, a baby five months ago. He's five months old now. Um, and so Kristen's still breastfeeding and she fortunately produces a lot of milk. And so she was freezing it for a while. Cause she's like, you never know if it's going to start going down, if he's going to need it later, or if he's going to use the bottle, we can have it. Um, he hates the bottle. And so we just had we literally bought a deep freezer because we were taking up so much freezer space. Um, and obviously we like to have meat and other stuff too, but it just made sense to get a deep freezer. And so we had this huge supply of uh, frozen breast milk and Kristen was going to see if anybody wanted to you know, buy it or have it for the, for, for the women out there that, that can't breastfeed or maybe they adopt it or something like that. Lo and behold, the majority of the people that responded to this Facebook marketplace they were, they were about mothers. breast milk. They weren't moms, were they? Bodybuilders. <laughs> Apparently, the going rate for breast milk is a dollar an ounce. She was hit Ooh. up by like five or six bodybuilders, and they're like, "No, no, no, we don't want the frozen stuff. Can you make like thirty ounces um, uh, and don't freeze it? And I'll come by and like in, in a day or two to pick it up." And she's like, 
that's not how it works. Like I can't produce just 30 ounces, <laughs> but yeah, that, that blew my mind that bodybuilders are actively seeking lactating women so they can get whatever amino acids, protein, whatever it is that's in breast milk that they think is, uh, is going for them. What's Speaking that of movie? entrepreneurship? I think maybe yeah. we, we set up some. Uh, we we, we did the math. We did the math. That the number a dollar an ounce is not going to cut it. <laughs> uh, uh, you, yeah. you need to set up like a uh, 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 post-pregnancy dairy farm um, to to make any kind of ends meet. Like that that'd be a whole slew of things. I don't know if the FDA would be on board with you well, no, milking a bunch of sure. maybe Central America. Uh, well, we have, we have Mexico right across the border. So maybe we yeah, can we do got that. Mexico. Who's the, where, where's the, what's the Central American country that's uh, like official uh, currency is Bitcoin, Salvador, Colombia, oh, Venezuela. Wait, isn't, it, isn't Venezuela? Yeah, I think it's Venezuela. Think it's Venezuela. Their, their official currency is, is uh, Bitcoin or at least it was right. at some point. Well, yeah, some, somewhere over there. Somewhere where Anything they don't, goes they don't there. Have rule. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Anybody else interested? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anybody uh, want to? Well, speaking <laughs> of the entrepreneurship side, if anybody wants a business plan, we'll just like Elon Musk open up his patents. I'll open up this business idea to you. Feel free to take it, run with it. Let me know how it goes. I'll be an investor, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I'm in. Dollar <laughs> announced. So, uh, take, take, jumping back to the uh, <laughs> oh yeah the 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 soft side, the SF side. How is it being now that you made it through Q course and you had a broken leg, you, you went through the language stuff, um, you're, you're long tabbed. How does that translate into your, your career? Because obviously you're a surgeon first. Mm-hmm. And now you have this tab. What, what, is, what access does that give you? What privileges? Um, where does that direct your career? Yeah, you know, um, so immediately from there, I went and took a, a battalion surgeon slot um, over at Seven Special Forces Group. And you know, I mean, you, yeah, you definitely don't need a, a, a long tab to go over there and be the doctor. I mean, you know, I think half the um, half the guys respect you for for just being the, an MD and, and, and you're speaking on your subject matter. But no matter what, you know, there's there's going to be a good chunk of the guys. Maybe it's 25 percent, but they're, they're not going to respect you if you can't, you know, run as fast as them or do as many push ups. You know, you're um, you're still kind of a, a guy wearing a maroon hat usually a little bit soft around the midsection. Um, so, I mean, it helped with, with, um, with credibility, you know, getting, being able to, to talk with guys, it, it helped on deployments um, instead of, you know, necessarily getting stuck in the, in the operations center, you know, back in, in, in Bagram, being able to, to um, kind of put those skills to use of being able to uh, go out with the guys and, 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 and do stuff. You just a, lo- a lot more trust from that side of things. And, and to be honest, I didn't really take my career much further than that. I mean, I remember that guy being dead behind the eyes. And so right right when my job was over, they were starting to, you know, look at me for, you know, early promotion to lieutenant colonel and getting dusting a, a nice metal desk off back at Bragg for me to go sit in, you know, the middle of nowhere. And it just happened that my time was up the seven years that I owe the army. So I was like, you know, against my mom's better wishes, you know, six more years and it's retirement. You know, a lot of a lot of people would love a pension like that, Jesse. Is, I don't know why is your mom name. a New York Jew? <laughs> I was adopted, yeah, by a New York Jewish lady. Um, so it's a little, a little bit weird for that. Um, but yeah, so she was not not happy, but I was ready to get out. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't Full know. Full disclosure: I'm Jewish. I have a lot of Jewish people in the family. It's how they talk. It's hilarious. <laughs> No, I, yeah, no, I love it. That's just why my default, uh, my default voice is an old Jewish lady. Um, <laughs> it's valid. But yeah, I mean, I think it just helped from the, um, uh, you know, I mean, credibility standpoint, they, you know, they're more likely to invite you to go shoot and more likely to invite you to, to go do this. And, you know, that's, I think just being part of the group and is, um, it is key to, you know, that, that, um, that respect that everybody has for each other, why somebody would listen to you and, and just, just kind of, well, they'll come talk to you, you know, because people, the people that you want to come talk to you, the ones that are le- least likely to talk to anybody at those at those moments. And and, and so um, I, I, you just have to think and it kind of helped from that standpoint. It helped me at least understand what I was doing. Right. And and, 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 and helped me understand um, the guys that I was working with, because, you know, they start coming to you with problems and, and, and you know, you realize, I mean, 
most of the guys, you know, young studs, it, it's not hard to keep those young studly dudes in, in, in good shape or in good spirits, right? They're, they're, they're driving themselves and, and you're not doing anything magical. Um, you know, but it's the guys who've been doing that shit for 10 years, 15 years, uh, bodies getting beat up and, 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 uh, and, and they, no, nobody's good at asking for help. I don't care if you're like a, a soft guy, just the typical man in general. Right. Uh, so if, you know, if you're a little bit more relatable, um, a little bit more likely to open up to you and it just really kind of helps with the, with the, with the peppering of any type of mindset stuff that you can give them and, 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 and walking them along the path. Uh, I think, I, I think it helped immensely from that. It really helped kind of drive. I mean, that's, that's really what I fell in love with was those, those guys that, that, you know, we were sending them for all these experimental treatments and some of them were okay, you know, but they're pretty temporary, you know, for a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the PTSD stuff or guys with a lot of this heightened anxiety, uh, you know, we'd send them for some of these, you know, nerve stimulations or these, you know, new types of injections and did they work? Oh, you know, yeah, I kind of got some relief. So no, I didn't get anything or, you know, it worked for two or three months, but man, there was just so much stuff going on underneath the hood and, and just kind of a lot of work that needed to be done. So to, to build those types of relationship where you could kind of, um, we we get them to trust you, come back, talk to you, keep working on those, uh, keep working on whatever it is that you need to. I think that was that was that was key. And so when when you got out, you had this idea to to set up uh, the business supporting mental health and, and general health of you. Don't, you don't work specifically with with veterans and service members, right? It's, it's a pretty broad audience, but that's just one one segment of of your customer base. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely more of like, um, a, 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 like if we were going to have a social impact, it's definitely based around veterans. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and I mean, and then the entire program that we do was really based off of those guys, you know, the guys that you get the, the phone calls on late at night, you know, the, the, the E6s, E7s that you kind of throw in the, in the back office, because they're having a hard time, they're struggling, you know, and none of those other experimental things that we were working on. Uh, we're, we're really doing much to move the needle. And so that's where I really just kind of dig what, what is, what's going on with these guys? What is it? You know, and I was listening to this Joe Rogan podcast. Um, there was a guy on there, his name's Mark Gordon, and he was talking about these traumatic brain injuries, really disrupting the hormonal access in the brain. And that just really resonated with me. I was like, hell yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of the, you know, the breachers, just the, the, the big impacts and whether you're getting hit by, you know, IEDs or uh, mortars or you're breaching doors or just, you know, crashes, rollovers, all the stuff that we're exposed to. And, you know, sure shit, we, you know, we had our own little lab there. We would draw their blood, their inflammatory markers were, were going crazy. Their hormones were in the dumpster. And it was just like, let's just start getting this shit corrected. You know, we had our own trainers, we had some nutritionists and it, you know, it was nothing but a walk over to them to see, uh, to, to start coordinating plans. And, and, and when you start correcting people's hormones, um, you see that they're starting to get early onset chronic diseases, like, you know, some of these, you know, sergeant majors or master sergeants starting to get pre-diabetes while they're active duty, you know, and you, it, but they're, but they're animals. And if you throw them on these, 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 these pretty, pretty standard plans, you know, they're engaging in it. They're reversing this quick. They're feeling like a million bucks, especially when you replace those hormones. And we were just getting amazing results. And you're like, oh, okay, this is great. This is awesome. Um, like now we're doing shit. And yeah. Great. Fast forward, leave the army, go work in a hospital, super stoked, going to make three times the amount of money that I've ever made in my life. Uh, go work at, you know, Best Buy version of hospital. Uh, and then you just go in there and it's just the same shit, just the same people with the same skin infections, the same, you know, pancreatitis, the same uh, pneumonias, um, you know, treat them as quick as you can, get them out to the street. And then I'd see them a week later. Uh, just, you know, rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. And man, I was there for two weeks and I was like, nope, this is, this is horrible. This, I don't know what the hell this is, but I am not going to be doing this. Uh, so, you know, stop spending so much money, Mrs. Greer. Uh, it's a nice car that you have now, you know, you compete with all the other, uh, other soccer moms around here, but, uh, I am, uh, I'm not working here. So yeah, like what, what, what is it that I like to do? And it was, it, you know, it was, it was what I was doing in the army. It was, it was, it was, it was looking at people who should be healthy um, and, and keying on all the, the proper lifestyle and, 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 and supplementing with medication to, to drive that true health. Um, 
And it, it, it kind of took that shitty job to realize what I did like so much. And how do we build, how do we build a clinic like that? A clinic for, for healthy people uh, to, to basically be their, their, their primary care provider for, you know, 30, 40 years while they're still healthy before they, before they actually need true medical attention, you know? So like how- true preventive care, like we should be, get, like, like everybody should be getting, right? Well, exactly right. How, how old are you guys? 39. 36. That's right. So, I mean, you know, if you, if we did a, if we did something called a calcium score, just a quick CT scan, look inside, look at, look at your heart and see if there's old plaque, yeah, see if there's plaque in there, right? It should be zero in both of you guys, you know, but what's funny is when you get to about 40, you know, maybe like 10 or 15% of the people I see, they have plaque, right? They, like some small amount, but it's there. And, and, and this is the type of plaque that is, it's calcified, which means it's old, which means it's about five years old, maybe, right? So that shit was starting kind of in guys your age right now, right? Um, so it's not much. It's not going to cause a heart attack anytime soon, but it's, the, it's, it, it's laying the groundwork for all that stuff that's building up in, in the arteries that are going to be doing that for the next 20 years, and then you're going to have your heart attack, Right. So why aren't you guys aware? I mean, why isn't anybody, you know, at 35, 40 kind of aware of this, aware of what the inside of their coronary vessels look like so that they can kind of start taking these these risk factors? There's levers we can pull to reduce that, right, to, to improve that stuff. So um, and if we're getting on that now and, and, and paying attention to it, there's no reason we can't put that stuff off so that you end up dying from, you know, something else at least. Are those levers the same levers that you should be pulling anyways? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. But you know what? It's but like, I mean, just take cholesterol for for uh, for example. And 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 cholesterol by by no means is is the like number one risk factor for for heart disease or plaque buildup, but it's but it's one of them that's up there. Um that like it's it's a it's an esoteric, it's 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 an abstract concept because you don't feel cholesterol, you know, and, and then when you come in and I go, Oh, your cholesterol is a little bit high, and then I show you some risk chart and how how likely you are to have a heart attack, your fucking eyes gloss over and you don't give a shit and you shouldn't. It's, it's a horrible conversation to have. But if, I, if, if you and I can look inside your coronary arteries and see that there's a little bit of new soft plaque forming, now it just became solid, it became concrete. And, and, then, and then now you're gonna start going, okay, so what are my, you know, three, the three big things I need to be looking out here? Oh, it's the same shit I always should have been? Great, but now we can at least have, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a solid concept now. Yeah, seeing is believing. Yes, that's exactly right. It's good. I mean, it's, it's the worst conversation to have to convince somebody or to talk to somebody about their cholesterol. Because, I mean, the honest, the honest truth is, is, is I don't even know. You could have just shit cholesterol, horrible cholesterol. And we look at, you know, but your, your, your heart vessels are in great shape. You're a Buddha. You've got no inflammation. You know, you can, you can ride that shit out to your 110. So, I mean, some of the, the, those, you know, octo, or those you know, centenarians that are living to be 100, they've got god awful cholesterol. You know, but their hearts are in great shape. It's not their problem. You know, more of a genetic uh, thing then. What's that? Is that is that a a genetic trait on how your body deals with it? I think there's a lot of genetics. Those people aren't doing the. Are you guys familiar with like that Brian Johnson guy trying to live forever? No. Um, You know, just some of these people that that are really indexing on longevity and and trying to push all all the life hackers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the you know, yeah, exactly the biohackers. Oh, biohackers, Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, and he's a he, he's a great example of that. Um, uh, I forget where was I where was I going with that? Uh, the genetics and oh if, yeah, if it's more of a genetic exactly issue, right. the old people, the people living to a hundred, they're not biohackers, you know. They're 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 walking up a hill, they're walking up a hill every day to go drink wine with their friends or whatever. I was about to say, you mean that hundred eight year old Okinawan woman isn't uh, trying to find the the the, the most pure. <laughs> Essential oils to be putting She's in her not tea every day. Pomegranate juice in her butthole every day, or whatever the fuck those guys are doing. Yeah, <laughs> sun tanning their assholes. Yeah. <laughs> perennial sun tanning. Dude, yeah. what I love is is when you get like a video of some of these like these old people, and they're just like, they're, you can just tell they're just like, fucking take me now. Like I, I'm done. Like it, <laughs> just take me. <laughs> That's right. I mean, and what what is it? That's like. You know, the, yeah, the, 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 the soul gives out before the, the body does or, you know, the, I mean, or you're, you're so sick and debilitated. You're like, what the fuck is this even worth? I'm just, I'm in a shell. I'm stuck in a shell for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the big part I, we, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with avoiding, right? I don't, I don't care to live to be 120, 130. I, I mean, people talk about, you know, trying to live to 200. I think that seems, or, you know, or some type yeah, of immortality. That seems a bit silly. 
And let, let me know when you can actually start preserving the the youthfulness of a body. I don't want to just live for the sake of living. Like I, I saw a picture of uh, Rupert Murdoch. And yeah. He just got married for the fifth time. Um, I mean, good for him. He married some 67 year old, yeah. uh, former biologist or something like that. Bioengineer. She looks great, but he looks like the crypt keeper. If you guys remember that TV show. Like, yes. I mean, he's 97 years old. So I don't know how much you expect, but that guy has the, not the most money. He's, Ten billion dollars or something like that. He can afford everything out there in terms of healthcare, and he's still looking like that. It's just, I don't know if that's really the the way to go to to want to live that. Do you old. think it was consummated, or you know, what's uh, that's, they, that's a question for that article? Or they they failed to mention that on on People or Magazine or whatever it was that showed up on <laughs> on Apple News. <laughs> but you you mentioned the the uh, the hormone side, and I remember as I was. Actually, it's probably the, the middle of my team time. Uh, one of the guys mentioned just all the hormone stuff that he was having issues with, and he recommended that I go get a, a hormone baseline, which the the docs on uh, on our compound did because like, hey, we we understand that a lot of team guys have hormonal imbalances for a variety of reasons. I mean, there's the the plasticizers and the explosives. There's the the sleep issues we have, the uh, the bad sleep rhythm. Um, what is a poor diet when you're on, on deployment up uh, higher levels of stress, whole bunch of things that, that lead into it. Cause what they were seeing, uh, I think it was Dr. Kirk Parsley or something like that. A uh, former seal that, that started doing sleep studies. I can't remember if he was doing hormone studies or sleep studies, but through one, he discovered that they're completely connected. Basically, if you're not getting REM sleep, you're not getting hormone or you're not getting testosterone production. If you're not getting testosterone production, then you're not sleeping well. And so it was just this massive, ma massive downward spiral um because they were doing some tests and if you know you think that with a bunch of 20 and 30 year old seals they'd have you know the top 10 percent of testosterone levels what they were finding though is that the majority of them were in the bottom 50th percentile because of a lot of these these factors a big one was was sleep issues you know they're issuing ambien as a sleep aid which we all know ambien is not an actual sleep aid it's about the equivalent of you taking a bunch of shots blacking out and waking up the next day um and so a lot of these things were, were causing testosterone issues, which is injuries, sleep, um, mood swings, and all, all the things that, that go along with having low testosterone. Um, so we, I got a, a baseline done. Fortunately, I think that was when I was around 31. So it's a pretty good, pretty good level. But if I have something like that or some, someone else has something like that, what, what can you do with that to, to get people back on track if, if they're like, hey, I'm getting you know, a bunch of weight gain? Um, I feel lethargic. I feel uh, whatever number of other issues that go along with hormone imbalances. Yeah, no, that's a, it's it's a good question. You know, another another cause of that too. I mean, anytime you get a group of guys like that where performance is top of mind, you know, people do experiment with um, you know testosterone replacement therapy on their own, or you know, or, or maybe even things above and beyond that. Right? I got, I, some, I don't think. I got some tea from down in Mexico. It's legit. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I did, I did not, I did not. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's where, that's where, that's where my uncle goes and gets all his meds. So I maybe hopefully I, I'm, I'm sure it's all right down there, but the, uh, it's fine. But, but, but when you do that, right. And, and, and I know people tend to, uh, that do it like that, they'll tend to cycle it on, on and off, but you know, still you will, you will completely shut off your body's own ability to, to make testosterone and then you come off of it and, and it tries to go back and tries to do as good a job as it was doing before. But what you find is that most of the times it, it, it doesn't really ever get is back to the, the same quality of, of testosterone production. You know, your own testicles, like your own nuts, they, 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 don't, they just don't. Right. And so and so when you when you get when you get groups of guys like that, then there is there's kind of some underperforming uh, testicles that you got to deal with as well. It, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's one other kind of, uh, uh, archetype I'll throw into the mix there. Um, but that's you now all of a sudden you have a problem, whether you did that or not. So, yeah. So, 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 so what do you do? Is there a sleep issue? Is there, um, you know, is somebody working out, right? I mean, squats and sleep, right. Are kind of like first, first line therapy for this. Um, and, and sometimes you can get those, those hormone numbers up to something that's a bit excess or that, that's a bit acceptable for you. Um, but a lot of times, you know, people are already kind of maxing that stuff out and then, and then what do you do? Well, maybe if your testicles were underperforming from, from recent, um, 
testosterone use or, or some other type of supplements. There's some prescription level things that aren't testosterone, right? Um, people will take things like, like Clomid or, or HCG to try to kind of boost some natural testosterone production out of their testicles. That's more of a temporary solution. Sometimes they increase the, your total testosterone that'll, that'll it, like for a, a, a amount of time, it'll stick around quite a bit after that. But a lot of times it kind of goes away when you stop taking those. And those aren't things that you take for life. Those would be medicines that we would give people if they're really focused on preserving fertility. They're still having kids, right? They still want to have mm -hmm. kids with their family. So you got to be pretty careful. Like, you got to be careful for that. Uh, there's a, there's a, a few types of therapies that um, you guys heard of peptides. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's some peptides that that people will go to before they'll go uh, to TRT to try to boost natural um, natural testosterone production. Um, you know, I'm not a big uh, peptide guy. I don't I don't hate them. I, I don't I don't love them. Um, you know, if they're if they're right for some people, then then we'll discuss that. Uh, but that that'd be the other that'd be the other uh, angle. And then and then you know and then testosterone replacement therapy uh, would be kind of that 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 final line and. And sometimes you can tell you're just delaying the inevitable, you know, and it's just like, well, you know, we're, um, it's going to be something that you're probably going to be on for, for quite a while. You know, um, when do you come off of it? That, that's, that's the, that's the discussion part that, that sometimes gets a little bit bleak. I don't, like, I don't know, probably till you get prostate cancer, uh, or, or <laughs> you're 70 or 80. And then, uh, and then like, can you imagine though, you're like, you're feeling viral or virile and, and, and vigorous with your testosterone. And then at 75, and then you were like, all right, let's take it off. And then you just, you just wither away. I'm like, I don't want, I don't want that scenario, but, but also I don't want to live the next 30 or 40 years, you know, just crying after fucking uh, car commercials or whatever. <laughs> also, I think the name of this episode is going to have to be squats and sleep. <laughs> squats and sleep. I oh, like that. I'm going to put it in there right now. So don't forget <laughs> squats and sleep. we with your, I imagine a lot of the stuff you, you guys are doing is creating holistic life game plans. It's not just here's a prescription or here's PT. It's all right. We're gonna we're gonna isolate some th certain things. You know, we're gonna work on your sleep first. We're gonna work on your diet. We're gonna work on your your fitness. And are you are you actually working out? Are you working out effectively? How how do you develop this game plan with your clients? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it should be it should be individualized. That's for sure. And you have to you have to get somebody's on a starting point where they're at, and and so that just means kind of a you know a real nice comprehensive look at all the stuff that's important. And there's so much stuff out there to look at. You can really get bogged down in all the noise. So it, I think it's it's important to be able to draw that that signal out, but also take a, a, a comprehensive look. So we we start with a big big kind of what we'll call like a next gen executive physical. Um, kind of a shitty name, but it gets people thinking what we're, what we're, what we're thinking. Um, but yeah, the extensive blood work, we like to do uh, body scans, uh, either we'll use, we'll use something simple like an in body, but we really enjoy getting, getting DEXA scans on people so we can get a real good look at the muscle mass, fat, fat content, bone health. We will assess them metabolically even deeper. So we'll put like a breath mask on them. The same type you would do, like if you're going to do a VO2 max test on somebody and test their their maximum cardiovascular output but what's interesting is you put the you 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 put somebody at rest put it on them for 10 to 15 minutes you get a much more accurate count of how many calories they're burning a day you know is it above or below kind of what you predicted right because you'll see a lot of these folks especially ones that are trying to lose weight um and they've been doing it for a while and they just don't eat much at all and their body adapts to that. So there's, you get some guy in here, look, he should be burning 2,300 calories a day just at baseline. You know, he's burning 1,600, 1,700. Uh, you know, he's, he's basically in starvation mode, you know. Um, but it's, it's, it, it gives us an idea of, 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 of where your building blocks are, where all of these starting points are. Um, so we can see, how, how's this person's muscle mass? Do they have a lot of muscle? Are they, are they under, under muscled? Um, do they have too much fat? Right? Are they storing too much energy? You know, how's their body burning energy at fat? Let's say metabolic breath test that we do on people. It tells us how much fat versus carbs you're burning at rest, which is super important. If you're if you're if you're a pretty fit person and you're metabolically fit, you should be burning almost all fat at rest. Your body shouldn't be stressed. It should be really leveraging that fat content on your body to produce all your energy. But you know, if your body isn't good at, at utilizing that fat burning pathway, 
you know, you're just sitting there at rest, burning all your carbs, right? Like, like your body thinks it's almost jogging, just sitting there. Right. So, so we, we, you start to get the picture. Where's where, how's this person's cholesterol look? How, how's their blood sugar control look? We'll put CGMs on people for 10 days and, and, and do that. Um, you know, how's their strength? And we'll do something simple, like assess their strength in here with like a grip strength. It's a surrogate. We've definitely had people game the system and, you know, sit with, um, where the hell's my, my grip strengthener. Right. They'll sit with one of these things, like at their desk all day and then they'll come in here and like crush the grip strength and you know it's off the chart and you're like no that's not how it works but the uh you know but, but, but where's their how, how's their strength looking right and and then and then once we have that big picture we know okay the big things how are they looking metabolically are they are they are they are they venturing into pre-diabetes land right because if they are we really need to focus on 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 their on on their the nutrition part portion of it, right? Probably reducing some of those carbs, and then that exercise portion of it, right? We need to start burning up a lot of that ener excess energy that they've been storing on their body. Uh, if they're if they don't have enough muscle, right? They're not going to have muscle to take up that blood sugar. They're not going to have muscle to drive all their other kind of key health elements, right? We need to start focusing on that, right? Where do their hormones lie? I mean, there's a there's a big tree that we kind of walk people through, but by the end of it, you get a pretty good idea of what somebody should be doing with their exercise, their nutrition, and then that's the key stuff. And then how do we augment that medically with medicines, supplements? What are the key metrics that you and I are going to focus on? When are we going to check that again? Are those the important ones? Let's, let's implement our plan, check back, see how we're moving, and then kind of fine tune from there. And who, who are your typical, um, Clients, you know, are you, are you having guys that are, are still trying to be performance athletes? Are are some of them still active duty service members, or most of these most of these guys on the, the twilight end of of their career and, and fitness stuff, and they're just trying to maintain? We get we get quite a few. Um, we get we get we get a big range. So we do get the folks that are you know in their the younger generation is way more focused on their health. So you'll actually, I'll, we'll get a lot of, uh, of, of folks in their early thirties in great shape, doing all the right stuff. And they just kind of want to come in and, and make sure that their blood work looks good. We also do a lot of one-time tests on people to help exp like just to help identify a lot of uh, some static risks, like just some, some risks that exist in your genetics, right? Do you, do you have a high risk mutation that, uh, it needs to change your cancer screening, uh, strategy, right? Um, is there, is there, do you have any, any high risk genes that put you at, a, um, a higher disposition for, for dementia, right. Or for, or, or for heart disease, right. Cause that'll change kind of how we, how we treat this. So we'll get those as well. Um, so those folks come in, they're interested in that and we'll do full body MRIs or, you know, some of these newer, um, what they call liquid biopsies, which are these screening tests for like 50 different types of cancers, you know, a little bit more biohackery type folks. Um, but they're great because they, they get, they get all this shit and then we kind of do the testing, they get a few aha moments and then, and then off they go. But, uh, I'd say the bulk of ours, of our clients are kind of 40 year old men and women. And that's right. When God starts playing his cruel joke on all of us and messing with our hormones, I mean, he does no favors to, to ladies at this age range. Um, you know, uh, right when their moms, right when their kids are starting to get to horrible ages of just being horrible little monsters. Uh, and then he just, <laughs> then he just takes away all their normal hormones. It just turns them into, um, animals that can't sleep. And it just, it's, it's, it, I, I feel so much for them, you know, and, uh, it's same with men, right? The, 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 the testosterone starts crashing, you know, um, you know, their, their, their boobs start matching their wives and, um, <laughs> they're like, Hey, I need to do something. I used to be in shape, you know, like where, where, where have things gone wrong and it's not too late. So we get. Um, that 40 year olds, uh, the, the, those 40 year olds are kind of the sweet spot to probably where we get the bulk of those. And then, yeah, there's folks getting, you know, fifties and sixties, uh, they're, you know, they maybe waited a little bit too long, but also looking to, to get in here and, and start, start reversing some of these early onset chronic diseases, pre-diabetes, you know, they, they realize they finally have, they've got some plaque in their heart. Like what the hell can I do about this? Right. And, uh, I haven't had a heart attacks yet, but I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to see my grandkids grow up. Yeah. And you're down in Arizona. So are your clients all in that area? Are you working with people uh, virtually? You know, they, they get the test done at whatever hospital and then they send you the results. 
How, yeah, how does right that now we're doing work? mainly in Arizona. I mean, we do have some people fly in for us uh, to to come to come do this. And the, you know, the the nice thing about what we do is is yeah, there are, there's we can leverage a lot of partners, right? So people can get blood tests done. We can send phlebotomists to people's house. We can kind of coordinate with uh, getting imaging scans done at people at near people's houses and, and and doing some of these testing. It's a little bit more more cumbersome, but what what you realize is that we're you know we're a medicine three point oh plug in. And, and, and that's how we're growing our business, right? Is, is, is not necessarily retail units uh, like, our, like our headquarters here in Scottsdale. All it's nice, people can come in here, they can get all the testing done in one spot and, and then and have conversations with us. We can meet here or, or remote, it, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you, you don't actually need this office, I, I need a space where people get healthy and stay healthy. So, you know, we've been partnering with gyms where we'll go and set up some, some, some small spaces there, 500 square feet. Um, and, it, and it's great because they come in, they get all their diagnostics, they get their big workup with us, they'll get some plans, and then they're able to go out into the gym with their trainers or their performance coaches who are kind of the, 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 the ground soldiers for the day-to-day -day implementation of what we're trying to do. So the idea is, anyways, we're we're gonna we're 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 doing some expansion in some other cities to be able to to grow and do this as we kind of build something that would be a little bit more uh, easy to do kind of remotely for 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 most folks. Nice. Speaking of like we talked about like that, there's a lot of noise out there in the wellness space, health and wellness space. What are your aside from squats and sleep? What are your like non-negotiables that? people should like whether it's it's supplements like because then there's like is omega-3 still a good thing to take is i mean creatine is like seems to be like pretty well received by like, all research and pe people seem to be pushing creatine pretty hard but i feel like there's a lot of controversy around like pretty much everything aside from maybe creatine yeah that's i think that's another good idea too like whatever people like you could just create a, you know some type of social media platform and just spew a bunch of bullshit about how this supplement yep. everybody loves is actually horrible yeah. for you. Dude, you'd have 10,000 followers in a month of just, you know, of, of, of haters and people like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like what, what you're talking about. Yeah. Creatine, omega threes. I mean, things that, you know, have been around for a long time, have great research on it, probably help. You know, there's not many crazy studies that's so like, oh, this is definitely, you know, going to be good for everybody. Everybody should take it. But it's basically mainly like, hey, a lot of people like this. Doesn't seem to really hurt. Um, so so probably pretty good. Uh, but again, those are those are tactics. Those are those are those are um, those are the things I think that confuse a lot of us. Right. It, it's just like, oh, take this, take that, do this, do that, um, do this exercise. Uh, and, and really the non-negotiables, you know, are going to start on the on the diet and exercise thing especially the nutrition, right? What are the non-negotiables there? I mean, the first thing we do usually is we find people are just drastically under eating their protein, like drastically, right? So we get them to track their food for a couple of weeks. And then, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a 45 year old guy weighs 220 pounds. You see he's eating 80 grams of protein a day. And, you know, he's just sitting here complaining about how he can't get it, put on any muscle mass. And, you know, he's not feeling very good. Uh, as he's eating 1600 calories a day also. So you can give those guys simple, simple plans, like the non-negotiable, like how about you get your ass up to 150 grams of protein and that's it. Like no, no necessarily specific diet uh, for them. It's a little bit too complicated, but if you take somebody who's eating 80 grams and you tell them to eat 150, they're going to call me in a week and be like, how the hell do I do this? It, I, I'm trying. It's like near impossible. You go, oh, okay. All right. I see you coming. Like go the, now, now let's talk about that. Then there's a, there's a little bit of a tactic to that. And then, and then if, if we can get them doing that for three or four weeks, one, I'll bring them back in here. I'll do another body scan on them, right? They haven't changed much else. They're going to see that their muscle mass increased. They're going to think we're doing black magic, right? Sometimes <laughs> you feel like a fraud doing all these fucking tests on people. And you know, the, you, 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 you give them some of these basic, basic principles and they come back and they're looking so much better. Um, but now in their brain, as they keep moving forward, they're going to be like, oh shit, I'm drastically under eating my protein today. Right. So I don't need them to count it and put it in an app every day. I just need them to now know that they're wrong for, you know, for, for, for under appreciating the amount of protein that they're eating for that day. And it turns more into a habit. Um, that's, that's, that's number one from that. And we'll get more advanced as people kind of come on board and, and are ready for more, you know, and then the second thing is the, the exercise portion of that. 
And if you think about the way most Americans work out, it's like, you know, we call our nutrition a diet, right? It's like, oh, I've got to eat this different thing or, you know, I'm on this specific non-sustainable diet, right? And we call our movement exercise. Like I have to go to the gym. I've got to have this one, you know, this one time set aside where I go and I sweat my ass off and that's my exercise. And in, in most Americans that are getting to the gym, they have that high-end cardio. They're in there lifting weights or they're in there, you know, doing their hit class at Orange Theory. So they're, their high end of their, of their cardiovascular relatively is okay. It gets right there. But other than that, they're going to their office job and they're sitting around on their ass all day. And what they're missing is that low to moderate intensity exercise that, you know, our ancestors, it, it, you know, in, in hundreds of generations before always had. And so when I tell them that the big, the big move here is to increase the amount of, of that, that low to moderate intensity exercise is the move. They go, okay, well, that doesn't sound so bad. Like, it, you know, like, uh, but then when you actually put them on a treadmill and they realize it doesn't feel like the exercise that they're used to and that there's no substitute, you can't take steroids and do zone two. Like it's, it, you, there's no substitute for the time. You know what I'm saying? You, the, yeah. you can't, you can't juice your way through this low to moderate intensity exercise. It is a, it is a, a time commitment. And, and, and again, another piece that if I can get somebody um, walking in their optimal heart rate for fat burning for three to four hours a week. And you bring them in here and you re rescan their body. They go, Oh shit, that wasn't that bad. Right. But it's getting them to calm the hell down while they're doing that and be like, okay, you're not going to feel that runner's high. You're not going to feel this. You're going to, you're going to hate this shit, get a new podcast, get a new movie to watch, you know, whatever the hell it is like, you know, you to, to, to rack up these hours. Yeah. That would drive me fucking insane. I, I, I'm that's like not for me. I mean, you're, you're probably hitting it like, all right now. I was, I was just talking to Christian with it this morning before this show. Uh, she's like, you know, I, I haven't been getting to the gym as much as I mean, she used to go all the time, so, several times a week. She'd go do double days, like to cross it right into jujitsu. I'm like, but you don't have a desk job, like you're walking around the house with a five month old carrying him. Um, you walk the dogs with the baby strapped to your chest. You go surfing. Um, you're still doing jujitsu. You're doing thing. Everything you're doing is moving and, and walking around with, with weight on you because you have. It's like the baby doesn't want to be sitting down a lot of time. Like you are burning so many calories just walking around. And on top of that, breastfeeding apparently is like an extra 500 calories a day that Ooh, that she burns. Geez, Louise, yeah. Um, and so it's, it's funny how, especially people like her that have this mindset of like, you need to go to the gym. You need to actually do the workout thing. Um, I used to laugh at her because she lived out in Hawaii and she'd go surfing for four hours. And she's like, I didn't, I didn't work out today. Like, what? Like, no, no, that's fun. That's, that's not working out. She's like, that's not the point. Like, you don't need to crush your soul and feel like you're about to vomit all over the floor every time you work out. Like, surfing for four hours on North Shore Hawaii is plenty of a workout for 99% of people, unless you're trying to be some elite high end athlete, which, let's be honest, none of us are. That, 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 that ship has sailed. Yeah. <laughs> I, dude, I, you know, that, that's an archetype of a patient that I get in here quite a bit. And, and that's a hard one. And they, they, they usually, you know, they, uh, their big complaints will be some type of, uh, of, you know, I'm pretty sure something hormonal is going on. And they're right. Like, the, you know, the, 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 they're um, 30 year old women, their estrogen is in the dumps and they're animals, right? They're always working out. They're always doing something. And, 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 and they're, they're not eating enough calories and they're, they're completely underrested. And they do not want to hear that. It, it, I mean, it, 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 it's also just hard as like, a, it's just like, you're killing it. You need it. to take a rest day. It's like, yeah, fuck I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You're killing it. And I'm, I'm trying to tell you that, yeah, to be softer. I mean, there's something, else, but, but also you, you're like, it, it's a little bit too much. Like there's, you, you know, we, we, we got to dial this back. We got to dial up the food. Um, and then, that, I mean, it's almost, in, it's, it's, it's near impossible. It usually takes. If we can get it through to them, you know, it, it usually takes uh, several months of, and then finally get a few rest days and they go, oh shit. Okay. Now I see what you're talking about. I see this. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think I just got the hang of this like three years ago, so I'm not pointing any fingers. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I've got a question for you. This is a rabbit hole I've gone down recently. I don't know if this was the Instagram algorithm pinging me or if this is actually Kevin, some, you something can't new. Blame that's blame all of your problems on Instagram. I will blame right? everything on Instagram. No, it's you cannot blame fire. all yeah, your problems the start, on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it Instagram so, or they're responding yeah. to your, your clicks, your eyes? There you go. Um, <laughs> B12. So the, the vast majority apparently of B12 in supplements is I'm probably going to butcher the hell out of this 
Sano Kabalaman. Yeah. Um, which the the hit on this now is apparently this stuff is cultured from sewage sludge. Um, so like all all the um, the sewage treatment plants, they skim it off the top and they can um, very cheaply source cyanocobalamin, which is one form of B12. There's all these doctors going around being like, look at your energy drinks. If you see cyanocobalamin, oftentimes they'll have parentheses B12. Uh, this is really bad for you. This is how they source it. Um, it has, you know, you'll see 480% of the B12 for the daily value. But that's also four to five times your cyanide intake for the day. Um, and to the doctors that I've seen, I'll do heavy air quotes, doctors that have been um, giving their opinions on this, like you should be taking the methylcobalamin, which is like the animal by byproduct version. A lot of animals out there like cows and stuff, they can produce their own B12. And so by getting the animal produced B12, it's much better for us. What are your thoughts on, on this whole craze going on? If you have any at all. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not. The, I haven't heard anything about the the sewage sludge, but I guess you know it wouldn't it go wouldn't down the rabbit hole. You'll, you'll see all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. No, I mean, it, I mean, come on. The regulation around you know supplementations and who can make it and how you make it. I mean, they're 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 not very robust. So nothing would surprise me on the the. And that's something we always have to be careful careful about, right? Is the quality of of where these supplements come from? Because uh, yeah, next to our, uh, our, our breast milk plantation, we'll also put our, our, our bathtub <laughs> meth slash supplement business, right? Um, bathtub <laughs> meth. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but for sure, um, yeah, the methyl B12 is, is, is something that, that I, uh, am, am, am very like adamant about that. That's what our, our patients are taking. And, and usually it's, it's in response to, uh, an inflammatory marker, a, a, a byproduct of, you know, fructose and, and, and other, another crap that we eat called homocysteine. And it's an inflammatory marker. It's, it's highly associated with increased risk for dementia and heart disease. Uh, and, and, it, and, and usually in males, it's, it's, it's a little bit through the roof. And you, the, the, the prescription for that is usually B12 and, and just your typical B12 isn't really going to cut it. But if you start with, if you give, if you give somebody methyl B12, I see that shit just plummet right? Plumb it down to, to, yeah. to normal levels. So that's the only thing I, I recommend for, for our folks. Is, is I just, ordered some of that off, off Amazon. It was like yeah. 12 bucks or something for 240 daily tablets. Oh. Um, and I, I've definitely noticed a difference in, in the week that I've been taking it. Because uh, I, I was always doing that. Like, should I have another cup of coffee? Should I have... I like the Monster Rehabs. They're, they're my little uh, vice that, that I've had for you know, 10 years. I don't have yeah. a lot of them. I'll have you know half of one once a week or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's something to help pick me up at, at, in the latter half of the day. You know, the, the five hour energy drink mantra, never have three thirty again or two thirty, whatever it was. Uh, but since I've had the, the B12, I, I've noticed it, I feel more consistent. I don't have crashes and stuff like that. So I was, I was I'm not sure if that's a placebo effect, if that was actually it working, but I've, I've seemed to notice it's it's been beneficial and, and I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily any better than, you know, B12 that you can get from a B12 shot, which again, a lot of them that I've seen are the, the Sino B12 or Sino Cabal. Yeah. If you're B12 deficient and you give somebody a, a, a nice slug of, of B12, especially in a shot form, right? People do get a, a big boost of energy from that. People put those in the, the IV drips and things like that. So if you're deficient in those, yeah, I used to notice a, a, a nice energy boost from those five hour energy drinks, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I'd have my, uh, Family sent me those on deployment, and it would be nice. Oh, they were great. Yeah, they're great. You know, but I, I, I think, I think I got caught up on my B twelve supplementation maybe after a couple of weeks, and then you know stopped stopped uh, noticing the effect of those. But, um, but yeah, no, that's a great one, and and and, and creatine is another good one too, right? Uh, like when people start kind of dialing this in there, and we're talking about the fine tuning, not so much the big the big blocks that we're solving for. Then, then mm -hmm. yeah, then there's a, a, a plenty of room for creatine. Um, people working out a lot. The other big one that, that I just throw people on most of the time is, is, is some form of, of magnesium supplementation because we tend to all be deficient in magnesium, and especially if you're moving a lot, and it's almost impossible to overdose on it. And Isn't that the it, one that gives you the shits, though, if you, eat, if you have What's too that? much of it? Doesn't that give you the shits if you have too much of it? Oh, yeah, there's definitely some magnesium supplementations. That, that's, the, that's basically what they do is, is yeah, just, get, just kind of flush you out, you know, so which maybe, you know. Be careful so. with it then. If you have to go someplace, <laughs> wearing white pants, maybe don't have the magnesium. 
Yeah. I don't know. You remember remember those fiber one bars? Oh yeah, two those things ran this. right through me. Whoa. <laughs> ran right through me. Yeah, I'm pretty Ooh. sure they gave me stretch marks around my butt. The one of those ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, please. That's that is a great descriptor. I have not heard that before. Uh, gra- graphic. I'm I'm yeah. trying not to picture it. Accurate. Uh, uh, so go, going forward, you know, with, with your your business, where do you see what what is your goal of what you want it to become? Um, what are you trying to expand to over the next couple of years? I know you mentioned some some aspects of digital telehealth in, involved in it. Yeah, I, I mean, this space is huge. It, you know, it it it, it couldn't have been better. Uh, timing for me, having having done this, kind of fallen in love with uh, the type of medicine we do, and we'll we'll usually refer to it as uh, as medicine 3.0. That's a term kind of popularized by by Peter Atia. Um, but I'll steal the shit out of it because I think it's a great idea because it because it, it it gets us thinking about a new type of medicine, and then that way we get to label current medicine, you know, medicine 2.0, and we get to describe kind of how shitty it is in, in certain aspects, right? I mean, it's great, like. America is the best place to have a heart attack or be in a car accident, right? Because we've mastered the the art of of treating people with diseases and people that have had shit go wrong. But there is no incentive; there never has been uh, for 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 figuring out how to keep people alive um, longer and, and and not alive longer, but healthier longer, right? Um, so there there's there's a huge huge movement in this space right now people becoming aware of how little of attention that they're paying to their, their health during those healthy years and how much it actually is going to have an impact on it. And people are starting to get it. And this space is growing huge. And I just kind of, I just want to be part of it. I, we're trying to put it out in the world. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of folks coming into this space. If, if you're um, I'm obviously probably on top of it, cause this is my, my industry, but um, you know, new, new companies coming out every day, you know, trying to do the all digital version of being able to set you up to go get all, all your blood tests and, you know, text with a doctor, you know, a lot of times you, that's their funnel for putting you on whatever sort of prescription or, or, or supplement, uh, subscription for their plan. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't really have that service layer on top of that. And so what, how we differ is we've got that personal relationship with people. So being able to talk with them, anybody can get a lot of these tests and a lot of these images kind of direct to consumer, and they tend to have more questions afterwards, right? What the hell does this gene mean? What is this? What am I supposed to do here? They take it to their primary care doctor or whoever their insurance assigned them to. They've got five minutes. They weren't going to do those tests. They didn't order those tests. They're not interested in interpreting them. And even if they were, they probably don't know really how to apply them to you to keep, keep, you, keep you healthy. So acting as that service layer on top of that to really help kind of bring the points home and drive this meaningful change. And we want to put this shit out into the world. So finding light ways that we can attach to places. Um, so Preamble, our company, right? How do we attach? How do we how do we put this Medicine 3.0 into places that it exists? And that's, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So we're working with a, a, a local gym uh, here, a high-end athletic club, to, to, to be able to, to put these in, in places like that. Um, we're, we're hoping to expand. We've got a partnership in California that we would like to get to by the end of the year. Uh, we've got another doc we're bringing on board and going to open up a, a preamble in Chicago and, and really just, yeah, how, how, how far can we push this and be part of this kind of coming revolution in medicine? That's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. I'm just more focused on getting that on the world. It's a big blue ocean. And so whatever happens is going to be fine, but you know, just kind of being part of the, our, being part of the ride and, and, uh, being part of, you know, all this new stuff that's coming. That's amazing. I'm, I'm super excited for the, these kind of things. I mean, biohackers get, get a, a bad rep because we sure. give it a bad rep because they, they come up with some weird shit as we talked about by, you know, perennial tanning and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but their, motive, you know, <laughs> their motives are a little yeah. bit like questionable. It seems a little bit like they're a little too scared to die. I mean, yeah. you know, and but yet they don't, the, they don't actually live. They're just constantly exactly trying right. to, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah so. Um, but I, I think that there's a lot of good in having this much focus on, on these things, especially just the preventative maintenance side of stop waiting until you actually have to go see the doctor before you talk to a medical person to, to get these things, uh, sorted out and you're, you're actually on the right track. So you can, you can feel healthy. Kristen used to be a, or she still kind of is, um, a, a nutritionist with, with women and she would talk with them about 
all right, here we're gonna we're gonna reset everything. We're gonna get a new baseline. It's pretty much go all the way down to to chicken, some minor vegetables, so that we can sort out what you might be having reactions to, what's causing causing inflammation, and just giving them basic nutritional guidance and letting their body kind of reset itself. They're like, oh, this is what it's like to have energy and not feel lethargic and just terrible all the time. But because they've always felt like that, they didn't know any better. Yeah. And so figuring out what your body can actually feel like when it's running efficiently or more efficiently, at least, I think it can be eye opening for a lot of people because they just they don't know that what how they're operating is is so um, subpar to what they they could potentially be doing. Yeah. Or you're you know you're trying to eat right and you're and you're trying to work out, but for you know for what reasons? I mean to feel better for sure. But also you know, to, to be healthier, right? To, to, to be healthier longer. And, you know, so are you sure that what you're doing is, you know, well, yeah, and to, and to get ripped and, and tan, of course. But, but <laughs> is what you're doing is, is what you're doing actually kind of getting you to those endpoints, you know? And a lot of us don't have that, that, that info. What are the endpoints I should give a shit about anyways? Um, you know, and, 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 and so if, if, if you add that into the mix, I think it just, it just rounds out the picture, right? Mm-hmm. Um, probably gonna not could be too much different, but might as well have those meaningful endpoints and kind of showing yourself that you're getting there and, and, and adjusting as you need. Um, it's we make it a lot more a lot more complicated than it needs to be. That's for sure. That's that's, that's for sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> simplify for sure. everything. Yeah. Actually, Greg, that's what your yeah. post was this morning. Simplify just, everything. Just gotta simplify it. Yeah, Four wins. Four. Four wins every day. So Jesse, where, where can people find you? How can they get in touch with you? Um, what's the the best course for them to start, you know, getting a game plan together with you? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I mean, our website's good. It's uh, preamble.co. We couldn't get preamble.com. Some Air Force vet right grabbed group. that like a year before we did and fucking started an AI company. Some what a, guy. What a uh-huh. dick. <laughs> He's like a super Sounds nice like guy a... too. He like messages me on LinkedIn like, oh, we accidentally got your post. And back out, and it's kind of harder to hate you for stealing my dot com. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, preamble.co is a good place to go and learn about it. Um, you know, we don't have too much of a, of a of a social presence. We're starting to get we're getting started on that. Um, but I think it's get preamble on on Instagram. Um, but the, yeah, that's that's probably a good place to to find us. And we're we're um, very personable, uh, easy to talk to. You you can reach out and talk with us. Sometimes it might be a little bit confusing. What kind of package or what, what kind of uh, what program should I sign up for but also we'll just jump on the phone with you and kind of kind of sort that out and, and help you get where you need to uh, again, again Arizona is the easiest um, we'll be coming to a few new places kind of in the next six months uh, but again you know if you're in the area uh, some people fly in for for one visit and then we'll, we'll we'll meet with them when they're out of state the rest of the year awesome I'm gonna send my parents your way they, they snowbird down in down in Arizona oh yeah you're, you're in where Scottsdale right yeah yeah, so they they're still like trying to they're thinking about buying a house down there, but they usually stay in like the Sun City area. Um, okay, so you know the old retirement yeah. area. Sorry, I mean still Phoenix Sorry. area, but about sixty minutes away. If you, you know. yeah, they always go to Scottsdale. In that area. Scottsdale's beautiful. Yeah, no, it's nice. It's yeah. uh yeah. Well, have them come down here. We we got a place in Old Town Scottsdale. So if you come by, you know Thursday or Friday, you'll catch some bachelorette party bikes out there and a bunch of nonsense. Like, yeah. Yeah, but we got the <laughs> yeah, the health enclave in here. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. It's been a, a wealth of information. Uh, looking forward to probably having a follow-on conversation down the road as you guys are yeah. expanding in and you're bringing in your your own designs. Yeah. Well, it, it, especially if there's any any vets out there kind of looking for this. I mean, we were talking about that before, right? I was I was talking with a guy. He just got done doing a tough mutter, and he's like, "Hey, you know, I've." I didn't do army or there's, uh, you know, I wasn't in the, uh, in the military. So I got to manufacture shit like this to do that. And I was like, no, actually, I think we all do now. Right. You know, it, it, and, and that's yeah. the problem. Sometimes we, we, we had uh, two PT tests a year. You had to study uh, at least a month ahead of time, you know, and, and, and the way we get out, we stopped doing that shit. And, and, and that's kind of the, that, that transition paired with paired with our loss of mission. Right. It's, it's uh it's, it's tough going. And, and, and so this is, this, this, this program is, is great for folks like that. So uh, at least to, to, to find a little purpose and, and, and manufacture some of that, um, some of that shit we need to, to stay healthy. So um, we'd love to, love to speak with anybody out there about that. I think it's a, it's, it's a great option for folks. For sure. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, of course, gentlemen, it was a pleasure. <laughs>